Finally, the video you guys have been waiting for, setting up the home lab environment from scratch. Now keep in mind this video should be used as a template because I'll be setting up this for my home lab, not specifically or generically for every home, every office, or every situation. So I'm just gonna set up for my house. Now if you want more generic setup guides, definitely you know hit YouTube and search for guides. They do exist, there are plenty of guides for this year, 2023, as well as 2022. And just based off of what I've looked at, there's not too many big changes uh, for setting up your home lab, uh, you know, specifically in, in details for VLANs and access control list. Now we will be doing a little bit of that, but remember this isn't a complete guide, just more of a template that you can use. Now, of course, Raid Owl has a guide, I have a guide, I've seen other YouTubers with complete setup guides, so be sure to check those out so you can get a more complete picture if you really need lots of details. But we will get into some of those things uh, in this video. So without any further waiting, because we have so much to do, let's just go ahead and get started. But first, a word from our sponsor. Unraid, the easy to set up and use Linux operating system that gives you the ultimate control of your data, media, applications, and virtual machines. It's hardware agnostic, which makes it great for any build with any budget. The way I like to start is just getting everything powered on and plugged in because, I don't know, I just find it easier that way. Now, you probably don't want to set everything up until you get everything um, configured first because we probably will need to reboot some of these things in the future, especially as we change um, subnets. Now that we have everything plugged in and turned on, we can... Uh, start working with the Amato ecosystem. The first thing we need to do is actually find all of the IP addresses, but one specifically of our Amato controller. So we're gonna use a tool called Nmap. It's November Mike Alpha Papa, the IP address, which is 192.168.0. When I say IP address, I really mean subnet, which is the default subnet, dot one slash 24. So your command should look just like this. Uh, we're gonna enter, and now this is gonna take a minute to scan all 256 IP addresses that are on the network within the 192.168.0.1 subnet. So we're just gonna give this some time and then we'll check it out when it's done. All right, Nmap finally finished. It didn't take too long. It looks like it only took about 179 seconds. So uh, whatever that means. Now we're looking for our Amada controller and it's probably gonna look very similar to the rest of these. Hmm, if I had to guess, it's probably going to be 101. So we'll try this IP address right here. And hopefully that is our Amada controller. So we're gonna take the IP address and paste that into Firefox. And hey, first guess. So that was our Amada controller. So now uh, let's just go ahead and get started and set this up. So I'm gonna change uh, the name of this to OC200. I'm gonna change the time to my time zone, which is central. And you don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna select office for fun. Hit next. All right, it's already discovered all of the devices that I have currently connected. So we're just gonna go ahead and say configure these. Uh, configure WAN settings overrides. This is new. I don't remember seeing this last time. I think we're just gonna hit Next, uh, we don't have Wi-Fi right now. We're gonna save that one for later, so we're gonna hit skip. Uh, our administrator name, so we'll go ahead and enter in an, an admin name. So let's just call it admin-spxlabs. Uh, you can put any, info, any email you want in here. And of course, you know, set a password, whatever password you want. Okay. Um, device account. Hmm. So this is new too. Uh, it says after a device is, is adopted, its username and password will be automatically set as a device account and will be required when readopting. Oh, okay. So we can, I guess, um, change the default login for the device account? Sure, we'll just do, we'll just do sadmin and give it a password. Okay, I return cloud access off. 
We're gonna accept the terms. We're not gonna join the improvement program and hit next. Okay, that says it's successful, so moving on. I'll go ahead and log in with the ID that you created earlier. Cool, so now it's giving us an overview of all the things within the Obata dashboard. We're pretty much just gonna skip this. Um, I'm pretty comfortable in figuring all this out on my own for the first time. By the way, I'm doing this with you guys for the first time. I haven't looked at it since the last time I touched this. Here is what I've come up with. So basically this is how our entire network is configured or plugged in. So starting from our AT&T gateway, this is where we get our internet from. We're doing IP pass through and that's going into our router here. And then all of the switches are being connected basically like this. So that's what it looks like. And then we're gonna create some networks. Now we're gonna have the admin slash LAN network. We're gonna have the lab network or subnet and the IP camera subnet. Now you can basically append uh, or follow the scheme if you want or change it however you want. Um, but this is generally what's gonna look like. So uh, we need to create our first, we need to change our LAN network to 192.168.10.1 and give it a VLAN ID of 10. Then we're gonna create a lab network, 192.168.20.1 and give it a VLAN ID of 20 and so forth. So this is basically what we're working with. We've got the OC200, one of our switches, the ER8411 router, and then another 10 gig switch here. All right, so let's get this out of the way. And now to change our default subnet, we're gonna click on settings. We're gonna go to wired networks and LAN. We're gonna click on actions here. We're gonna edit this. So we're gonna change our LAN name to admin because that's what I would like it to be called. We're gonna give it a VLAN ID of 10. Uh, we want it across all ports. We're gonna change the subnet to 10. Uh, we'll click the update DACP range. And then we're gonna change this to 10. So that way, actually we're gonna change it to 20. So that way, anything that gets an IP address um, from the DHCP server that's running on this subnet will get a IP address starting with 21. So it'll be the next th device to connect would be 21, 22, 23. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I will manually assign IP addresses to other devices. And I want those static IPs to be less than 20. So that way, basically anything that we want to control is gonna be under this uh, 20 address. And everything else is, you know, it doesn't really matter, it'll just be random. For the DNS, we're gonna set 1.1.1.2 and 1.1.1.1. These are cloud fares. Uh, DNS servers. So uh, this 1.1.2 is gonna block malware and 1.1.1 is just gonna be their primary DNS. So we're gonna hit it on save, go ahead and hit save here. And this is gonna take a second to update. Now I find the easiest way to force everything else to um, get on this new DHCP address is basically just reboot it. Um, you can try from the controller and change this to static, but sometimes I feel this doesn't work, but we'll give it a try. So we'll say 192.168.10.2, netmask 2255, oops, 255.255.0 is fine. Gateway 192.168.10.1, oops, 10.1. And we're just going to say, do this for now, dot two. We'll just hit apply or hit save. Okay, save succeeded. So let's go back to devices. Okay, it's, it's definitely doing something. So we're gonna adjust our address here. So 10 dot, wow. Just our address here, we're gonna do 10.2 and see if that comes back up. It might take a minute. Okay, accept. So my laptop was able to pull a new IP address on its own, uh, but if you do have trouble pulling a new IP address, uh, definitely think about restarting all of your devices or unplugging them and plugging back in. But restarting is probably the way to go. All right, now let's go to devices and make sure 
All right, all of our devices pulled a new IP address on their own. I didn't have to restart those. Now we're gonna wanna change these IP addresses. So let's go ahead and start with this first switch. So we'll click on that there. We'll click on config next. And then we'll scroll down to VLAN interface. We'll click on this little edit button here. And then here we'll say used fixed IP address. So we will change the IP address to three. Uh, we are gonna let the fallback IP address be 192.168.0.1 just in case we screw things up. Hit apply there. Okay, that should take a minute to update. So we see that it said succeeded. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next switch and we'll do the same thing. Config, VLAN interface, edit, enable, and this one will be dot four. Hit apply, close. All right, and we will give that some time to update. If for whatever reason this is taking too long, you can just reboot these remotely. So that way it'll force them um, to take their new IP addresses sooner. And I would highly recommend that you make sure they change their IP addresses first before moving on. So now we've got to wait for both of them to reboot and our Amata controller to come back online. See you in a few minutes. Forcing the switches to reboot was the correct call here because they finally did update their IP addresses. It did take a minute, but the IP addresses were updated. Now, before we do anything else, we're gonna make sure everything is updated before we continue. So we're gonna start with the Amata controller first. Updating that first feels like the right move. So we're gonna click on the settings icon here, uh, which is the gear, and then we're gonna go to maintenance, and we're gonna scroll all the way down, and we're gonna click on the check for upgrade. Oh, and this one's already up to date, so there's nothing we need to do. If you press that, you may have to download and install something new, so definitely do that first. And let's see what version I'm on. I'm currently on controller version 5.7.6 or firmware version 1.21.7. So I guess this looks fairly new. All right, so now let's go take care of our devices. So here on the left pane, we're gonna click on devices. TP-Links added this awesome button that just enables us to check for updates or upgrades. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna let it do its thing. And there doesn't, oh, there is some updates. Okay, that wasn't too, too bad. So we're gonna start with the router first. So we're gonna click on this upgrade button. We'll hit upgrade. And the reason why I'm not start, starting with this switch is because my Amata controller is plugged into the switch and I don't want it to uh, disconnect me while it's you know being upgraded because while the upgrade happens, it is gonna restart the device and I'm gonna lose connection. So I'm just gonna start with the router. No particular reason, but I would probably start at the router anyway, um, just because it's gonna be doing so much for us here in the future. Sweet, so we've officially updated our router. So we're gonna close this little notification here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade our switch next. Now this is gonna bring down the Amata controller and that's okay. Oh, it even tells us what's gonna happen. That's pretty neat, I didn't expect that one. So it looks like they're adding in Jumbo Frames, IEEE, Flow Control, Loopback, VLAN based, Time based Access Controls, MAC Address Format Customization for 802.x and some other bug fixes and other notes. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we're gonna ignore that for now and click on Upgrade and I will see you guys back when this is done. Now that everything's been upgraded, we're pretty much ready to start creating our network slash VLANs. And this is pretty much what I'm aiming for. We'll have an admin network or an admin LAN uh, that can access all the other LANs. We'll have a lab LAN that we'll use for testing our access points, uh, smart devices, whatever they may be, the internet of things. And then we'll have an IP camera uh, VLAN as well that will be segregated uh, from everything else and so this is the IP scheme that we're going to follow and the subnets we're going to create and of course uh, With our AT&T gateway we will be passing through our public slash WAN IP address to our ER8411 router uh, and then of course from here we basically um, divvy out the LAN slash WAN connection uh, to all of our other devices and no, well, this is the general layout so Moving on to create our networks, the first thing we're gonna do is click on the settings icon down here or the gear, whatever you'd like to call it. We're going to go to wired networks, click on LAN, and we're gonna create a new LAN. 
So our admin slash LAN networks are already created because that's the first thing we did. So we're gonna go ahead and create the lab network next. It will be on, uh, or the purpose will be set as interface. We're gonna say, hey, yeah, use the SFP plus WAN, WAN slash LAN2 port. We're gonna give it a VLAN ID of 20 because that's what I previously put on um, my graph. The IP slash subnet that we're gonna use is gonna be 192.168.20.1 slash 24. So that'll give us 254 possible IP addresses. That's what this 24 means. I'm gonna hit update. All right. And for DHCP range, we're gonna actually gonna start the range at 10. So that way all new devices, actually I take that back. We're gonna start at 11. So any new device or client that's connected will automatically be assigned um, an IP address between .11 and 254. Um, well, we might use some static IPs in the future, I don't know, but I just wanted to reserve some space on this subnet for manual reservations. Uh, for DNS server, we're going to hit manual here and we're just going to use Cloudflare. So this is the Cloudflare anti-malware address 1.1.1.2 and then we're also going to use the DNS of 1.1.1.1. And we're pretty much done. That's all we need to do here. So we'll hit save. Now we need to create a IP camera, VLAN, or network, sorry. Also gonna have access to the WAN LAN. We're gonna give a VLAN ID of 30, 192.168.30.1 slash 24, updates DHCP range. And we're pretty much gonna leave the rest of this as default uh, there's really no need to configure this because we pretty much intend on blocking uh, the access of this subnet to the internet. All right, so we'll hit save. And for fun, I'm going to create another network. This one is going to be called public. So we'll pretend like we're creating a public or like guest Wi-Fi. It's not going to be quite guest. We'll have our own restrictions on it. Uh, if you guys need a guest network, TP-Link Almada already generates a guest network to block things uh, like some of your other subnets. But I just wanted to do something as an example. So we're going to do pub public here. We're going to give it a VLAN ID of 50, I think. Are we on 40? Got to double check my work here. We're on 30. So we're going to give it a VLAN of 40. 192.168.40.1. We'll just let it have 24 addresses. And for this one, we're going to change the DNS to 1.1.1.2. So that'll block malware, 1.1.1.3. And this will block um, adult content. So Cloudflare does this for us, which is really cool. And I believe that is all. So we'll just hit save. And there we go, we've created some networks. Now that we have some networks, I think now would be a good time as any to go ahead and start creating some switch profiles or some ACLs actually. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna create a new rule to block the IP cam from access to the internet. So this would be IPCAM block internet. So we're gonna say from the LAN to WAN. So anything that's trying to get out from the LAN to the WAN will be blocked. Deny. We'll just go ahead and say all protocols just to be extra safe. The network that we're, or subnet we're gonna use is the IP camera one, of course. And we're just gonna say IP group of any. And create. So now all I, all the internet traffic from the IP camera WAN will be blocked to the internet. Pretty easy. All right, let's go over to switch ACL. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some uh, rules to disallow the IP camera network from communicating from any other VLAN. So IP cam block all VLANs. So we're gonna block everything. 
we're going to say the IP cam cannot have access to any of the other networks. Hit create. Sweet. Now we're going to create another rule where we're going to block IP cam from accessing the gateway. Uh, what I mean by that is, let's say that someone plugged into the IP camera port or a port that's de designated for IP cameras only. Uh, I, want, I don't want whatever device it is to be able to uh, access the web UI or the gateway or the router of that VLAN. So I'll show you what that looks like later, uh, but you can kind of, actually, I'll just show you now. So you can kind of think of it as in, you know, so if I'm on the IP cam network and I type in this address, it'll take me to the router, but obviously the IP cam network gateway is going to be 192.168.30 instead of one. Right now it's not, you know, going to work, so whatever. Um, so that's what we want to block. We want to block access to the router essentially. So we're going to say IP, IP cam block gateway. And we're only gonna deny TCP and UDP requests. There's no reason to deny everything. Um, a good reason why is, so you see ICP, ICMP requests in there. Uh, for troubleshooting purposes, we're gonna wanna be able to ping the gateway to make sure that we're actually connected to the network in the future. So that's why I'm only selecting TCP and UDP. We only wanna deny access to the gateway web UI. So of course we're gonna do network and then we're going to do create a new rule. And this one is IP cam gateway. And we're going to block the specific IP address 30.1, 32. So this 32 essentially means that this IP address specifically is blocked. It's really this bit or these bits right here are blocked. Uh, or not our block. So it's only going to use just this IP address and we're blocking specifically this one. If we were to change this number to something else, it wouldn't quite work out. So we're just going to spe specifically use 32 to specify this exact address. It's not really what it means, but you can kind of think of it like that just to make it easy. All right, select that, create, boom. Now our IP cameras are also blocked from accessing the router on the same network. All right, we're gonna create another rule. We're gonna do the same thing for public. We're gonna say, hey, we don't want to deny everything, or this is gonna be public block all VLANs. So public network, oops, create. And now we're also gonna to wanna to create public block, I can't spell, block gateway. All right, and this time we're just gonna, we're gonna block everything but IC and P, so that way we can ping it for troubleshooting purposes. So this network, and we're gonna create a new group, and this one is going to be the address for our public, oh, what am I doing? This is name, sorry, sorry. This is gonna be public, gateway 192.168.40.1 slash 32 and we'll block that okay we're going to create a new rule and this one's going to be lab allow access to IP cam. So this specific rule that we're going to create is going to allow the lab network access to IP cameras, just in case we want to be able to view them. Um, so we're going to say permit. Uh, we'll select all protocols from the lab network to the IP cam network. So now we should be able to ping basically, or not ping, but interact with anything basically on that network. And we'll hit create. And just for fun, we're gonna say admin access all VLANs. I don't think you have to do this. I'm just gonna do this because we're creating rules and also just to show you um, the things that you can do 
with it. And we're going to say network. I guess we're going to allow it to itself create. All right, so that's a huge list of rules that we just created for all sorts of things. Um, we've pretty much blocked everything that I think is important for our networks. Uh, blocking IP cameras from accessing the internet was always a good move, as well as accessing um, other VLANs. So, and we do want to allow some access to the IP cameras from some networks, specifically from our lab network, because we will want to work with IP cameras while we're on the lab network. All right, we nailed that one down. So I guess now's a good time to work on our wireless access points. Great, so plugged in a wireless access point. So let's go ahead and go over to devices on the left pane under our dashboard. And sometime soon, <laughs> we should see that appear on this list. So we'll just give Amada a minute because I just plugged it in and hopefully it refreshes with that access port. Okay, it took about a minute, 35 seconds for it to appear in the um, devices dashboard. So I'll just go ahead and adopt this device for the first time. And we're basically going to repeat the same steps that you've seen already, but I just want to go through them so everyone knows what how I would do this or how I would approach this problem. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. That's more of just what I believe are the best practices. Obviously, there may be better practices than what I'm showing you, but nonetheless, I think it's important that we do. So we're gonna go ahead and do the check for updates again, just to make sure everything is up to date, uh, specifically the access point or the wireless access point, because we wanna make sure the EAP610 is more compatible with the latest software controller and vice versa. So it doesn't look like there's any updates. We'll just click the refresh button up here. Mm, no change. Okay, still no updates or no changes. So I guess there's no new updates. So now let's go ahead and configure our access control list for our wireless network. But before we do that, we actually have to create a wireless network. So we're gonna create two wireless networks one will be for the lab, and we're gonna allow this to be on every band. We're gonna, um, for security, we're gonna set WPA personal, security key, to give it something you can remember. Under advanced, we're gonna want to enable the VLAN here, and this lab VLAN was 20. So it will get all the access control rules that we set. WPA mode, we're gonna leave this as WPA, oops, as WPA2, it says WP, WPA3 AES, I cannot speak. Um, now, instead of making it mandatory, we're gonna set it to capable because if you set mandatory, this will be very restrictive, meaning that older devices may be unable to receive critical packets to ensure that it is being set up um, so I think they're uh, encrypted packets to make sure that it can work more perfectly, I guess, with WPA. So basically you can block devices by accident. So we're just gonna say capable. So that way uh, every device that I have will basically guaranteed to have a spot on this network. Um, for those of you that know way more about networking, uh, you may wanna select mandatory depending on how secure you want your net network to be. Um, we're not gonna set any rate limits here. We're just gonna leave it as default, default everything and hit apply. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and create the public. Ooh, I cannot spell public. And let's just pretend we want to limit our public Wi-Fi for whatever reason, whatever reason you can come up with. Let's say that we only want 2.4 gigahertz capable devices Maybe we have a lot of internet of things or something that have trouble with the five gigahertz band or something like that. So we're gonna do that. Um, if you wanted to create a guest network Wi-Fi, this is the option I was telling you about earlier. Uh, so if you click this option here or enable this here, it says guest network will be enabled. Guest network will block clients from reaching any private IP subnet. So that's really cool that they bake that in for you. You don't have to set up a access control list or anything like that. You might want to set up a couple just in case, but 
out of the box, you can block all access to other subnets, which is cool. We're gonna do the same thing, WPA personal, give it a, a password, something you're willing to hand out. We're gonna click on advanced, enable the VLAN of 40. We're gonna leave all the same settings, WPA2, capable, and we're actually gonna create a rate limit. So right now we have no rate limit. So we're gonna create a new one specifically for the public network. So we're gonna call it public rate limit. And this might be valuable to you because you don't want everybody or whoever has access, this, access to this um, wi wireless network downloading or oversaturating the rest of your network. So we're gonna say limit this to 10 megabits per second. That's pretty giving. You can do a lot with 10 megabits per second. And we're gonna reduce the upload to five megabits per second. And now we hit apply. We're gonna hit, up. we're not gonna mess with anything else here. Oh, actually we gotta hit, there we go. Almost missed that. So now we're gonna select the public rate limit under rate limit. Now we hit apply. Boom, those changes have taken effect. And let's go over to network security. We're gonna create some new wireless access controls. So this is under EAP ACO. We'll create a new rule here. We're gonna say block public, please type correctly to, or uh, sorry, we're gonna, we're gonna stick to the name, same, same naming convention. Public block all VLANs. We're gonna deny every protocol from the public network to all the other networks. Okay. And we're gonna create another rule, public block gateway. So we don't want anyone on the public being able to reach our gateway, but we're only gonna block TCP and UDP requests. All other requests will be approved. So, Anything from public block to the public gateway. So we'll still be able to ping the gateway if we're on the Wi-Fi. And I don't think we have to do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway just for um, fun. Allow access to VLANs. Permit all pro, Ooh all protocols from the lab to public IP cam and I guess itself for fun. There we go. Now you could obviously add more access controls in here if you really wanted. Um, I think this is good enough. Obviously you can really hyper customize this as you see fit, um, but for I guess my purpose is we're just gonna stop here because I think that pretty much rounds it out. But let's at least take a look at all the controls that we just did and test it out to make sure everything is working. So we will start with our wireless access point and I have a laptop set up over there that we can test with to make sure that it's blocking the public gateway and access to the other VLANs. So let's, let's test it out, let's see what happens. Got my wireless access point set up here and it's connected to this switch and the port it's connected to is configured to be on all VLANs. That's very important when working with wireless access points so that way they can access all VLANs and provide access to clients to very particular VLANs or subnets, whatever you'd like to call them. And we're gonna connect this laptop here to the public network slash VLAN. So first things first, let's go over to here and connect to the public VLAN, enter in our super secret password. Yes, we want to connect. All right, we connected right away. Um, let us do a quick ping to our gateway. Oops, that is not at all what I meant to do. Let's see. So we should be able to ping the gateway. Good, we can do that. Now let's test out access to the internet. It's clearly working by being here, cool. Let's do a speed test to see if 
we are in fact rate limiting it. So we're of course going to see pikes, but this spikes, but this should fall back down uh, to around 10 megabit per second, um, like we set. So that seems to be working. It's just over 10. But that's okay. And last test is we want to see if we can access our gateway or router via the web UI. We cannot, so that seems to be working. And just for fun, now that I'm thinking about it, let's try to ping something in another VLAN, like another gateway or the Omada controller. Okay, that appears to be working. Sweet. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to see. Great. So we got pretty much everything that I would like to get configured, but there is one mistake that I just realized that we need to go back and rectify. And that is actually our DNS that we are initially selected for public. Now, before I said that I wanted to set the DNS server to automatically block malware and adult content on the public network. Well, I made a mistake. So in order to do that correctly, you need to have 1.1.1.3 as your primary and 1.0.0.3 as your secondary. And this will actually use Cloudflare's family DNS. So it will be a little bit slower than using 1.1.1 um, or just 1.1.2 in general. Um, so with this setup, you may see some latency if you're trying to get the absolute fastest connection you can, but that's okay, I think. Um, I don't think you're really gonna notice it, especially in like games or anything in streaming, anything important. But now that we've made that change, let's do something risky and go over to our laptop and make sure it worked. All right. Here we go. We are still connected to the public Wi-Fi. Um, let's just go ahead and check that our DNS servers are updated and they appear to be. So here we are, we have both Cloudflare's IP addresses. Let's open up our web browser. Thank you, Microsoft, for all of the notifications. And let's go to everyone's favorite porn website and see if it works. And it's blocked, perfect. So. That seems to be working. Uh, you can try your favorite porn website at home if uh, you so see fit. With all of the pornography blocked, the next thing we wanna do is now configure all of the ports on our switches so that way they are using the right networks or VLANs. Now there are many ways to do this, but I'm gonna do it my preferred way because it's easier for me mentally, but you can do whatever you see fit on your equipment. So what I'm gonna do is go over to devices and we're gonna configure the first switch here, and we'll click on ports. Now, you'll already see that port one is providing power to some device that I know what it is, but y'all don't. So the device that's being powered on port one is actually the OC200. And if you remember from this picture that I showed you early on, the OC200 is plugged into this port, and that's how it's getting power. Now this, Wireless access point isn't accurate because I set it up in this lab here or in this room here, which is just over there. So it's actually plugged in to port three, I think. It doesn't actually matter. So because port one is running the OC controller, we wanna make sure that it actually has access to all profiles. That's what it says here that's hitting behind the action button. But we are gonna to wanna to change all the other ports, at least for now anyway over to the uh, lab VLAN. So I'm just gonna select the lab VLAN, scroll down, hit apply, and now all these ports are configured to lab VLAN. So anything that gets plugged into there will automatically be on the lab VLAN, and there's nothing that we need to do as individuals. So let's close out of this one and open up our next switch. So this is the 10 gig switch that's just off camera here behind me, the one that I've shown you multiple times in this video. And we can see that we have something plugged into port one, port three, and well, that's our uplink port or trunk port that goes back to the other switch. So we want to configure uh, these appropriately. Now port one, I'm pretty sure is my MacBook Pro. 
Um, I'm not willing to bet money on that, but we, I think it is. But for demonstration purposes, port three is our wireless access point for sure. So that needs to be on all. We're gonna change port one to be on the admin network because I think that's where my MacBook Pro is plugged into. And then all of the other ports will be on the lab subnet. There we go. So now anytime we need to interact with the Omada controller, we'll have to be plugged in to the admin network in order to interface with it. So once, once I change ports or move things around, I will no longer be able to access the Omada controller and make changes. And that's by design, that's like for security reasons. Obviously you can make this more or less secure, however you see fit. Um, but that's just generally how I'm gonna play it for this video. Oh boy, what a lot of changes. I think this is a good point in this video because I don't wanna do anything else because this the video would end up being two or three hours long probably, depending on all the things that we did. I think this is a great basis to get started. If there are things that weren't included in this video that you want to see, drop a comment below, let me know what they are. Maybe I'll do a video about it in the future. I can't make any promises on the content I will make, but I will consider pretty much anything that is left in comment form. But again, I can't make any promises. So stay tuned because there will be more Amada stuff to come in the future. We have access points that we need to start taking a look at and compare against uh, their brethren. And so I think that's pretty exciting. I think we've, we've finally got the network at a good place where I would like it to be. Hopefully this video provided a good template for you at home so you can configure it or make changes where you see fit. And well, I guess that's all that needs to be said. So I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching and I will see you all next time. Peace. Ugh.